any object that spawns projectiles is a projectile spawner. That's this little guy right here. We're going to set up our first... This video will go through setting up a projectile spawner so you can see the process and all of the options available to you. For this video, I've copied the spawner here and I've set it up so it's just a basic actor. This could be your character, this could be a turret in a tower defense game, it could be anything that's going to emit particles. So let's start by adding a projectile spawner. Alright, at the start the inspector is telling us that we do need to have at least one projectile and at least one spawn point. Let's go ahead and set this up, starting with the collision mask. The collision mask is the default values that any projectile will collide with. For this we're going to set default and actor. That way any projectile, unless it overrides this value, each projectile can override this value, will collide with default and actor layers. Next, we'll, let's set the target to be this demo target here on the ground. You can set this at runtime with the methods available and definitely check out the scripting documentation for all of those methods. For projectiles, we'll expand this and let's bring in our two projectiles here, our arcane missile and rift missile. We set up the arcane missile in the other demo video. Check out the create your first projectile page on the scripting docs for that video. And we need at least one spawn point, so let's go ahead and create that now. Every spawn point will have a spawn point itself, that's the transform, and then a rotating transform, that's something that rotates horizontally, and a tilting transform. Some of the spawn behavior modifications might make use of those values, these extra rotating and tilting transforms. If you don't have a rotating and tilting transform, or just you have one, not the other, just use the parent transform. Our spawner only has one spawn point. If we had multiple spawn points, we might want to use a spawn point manager, which will control how those other spawn points are selected. The project comes with the sequential spawn points, which just moves between the spawn points one at a time. But you can create your own spawn point manager to create more unique logic for your game that better works for whatever projectile spawner you're creating for your project. So we are using the demo scene here. Before we press play, I just want to make sure that we change the player here to our test player and everything else should still work all the buttons for spawning new projectiles there we go our two projectiles work the demo projectiles have a projectile demo actor component on them these are the demo scene actors that act as a player character for this demo, the details don't really matter. Just the fact that this exists, this is how the projectiles actually do damage to any of the targets. Whenever the projectile hits a target, it will tell the projectile spawner that it hit the target. Let's check out some of the events. We're Click over to the projectile events. These are all events that will be copied over to every projectile that's spawned by the spawner. Expand the on launch. These are all Unity events, so you can attach any script you'd like from your scene into this. So I'm gonna bring our spawner over here and we're gonna select the projectile demo actor and the add projectile launched method. This basically keeps track of all the projectiles that are launched. It's going to show up here in the UI. And since we did change the character here, we're going to have to change the linked actor in the demo actor. The Unity events for the projectile events and the Unity events on the spawner events are a great way to connect your logic with the projectile factory. That way you can see what's going on and you can react such as adding damage or doing other things whenever projectiles are spawned or when they collide or when they're returned to the pool, etc. There's a whole lot of events that you can tap into to make this work with your project as, as a, however you'd like. Another way is to add an observer. Observers are projectile behaviors, but instead of changing the way a projectile acts, they simply wait and observe, and then they do something on those life cycle events of the projectile. If you add an observer to the projectile spawner, that observer will be added to every single projectile that this projectile spawner spawns. Let's go ahead and add one here, and I'm going to select the demo actor observer. If we look at the script for the demo actor observer, we see that we're overriding the launch projectile method and we're going to assign the actor at that point. 
This is going to be for every single projectile that is spawned by this spawner. The collision enter and the trigger enter both call hit object, and that hit object is going to check to see if the object we hit is a projectile demo actor as well, and if it is, we're going to register a hit, and that's what actually causes the damage. So let's go ahead and press play. So let's go ahead and fire some projectiles at the target, and as we hit them, we can see in the console some messages come up saying that we have indeed triggered a hit between the two, and these scripts are called by the actors themselves. These are external to the projectile factory. These are the demo actors. You'll likely have a script for your characters that does very similar things on got hit. That was just a demonstration on how you can connect the projectile factory with your own game's logic. And that's it. We're all set. We have a working projectile spawner now, and we can add even more projectiles to it and move on with our game. If you have any questions, come to the Discord. Don't forget to check out the docs on infinitypbr.com, and I will see you real soon. Thanks.